This is not my art. Nani is from Mika Picasso, a professional Japanese artist who uses a lot of really cool painting tricks like these color half tones, this strange shading technique using unusual blend modes, and a lot more that I think we can all learn from. So in this week's special episode of YouTube Art School Study Time, I'm gonna attempt to break down and reproduce her style by working on a painting of my own while explaining her entire process. It's a lot simpler than it seems, if you can believe it. So let's try to copy this popular artist to learn all of her secrets. <laughs> All right, before I paint anything, I want to take you along for a little observation session to identify some of the cool things that she does. Then we'll break it all down and later in the video, I'll demo her signature painting trick so that you can do it too. These are some of my favorites from her portfolio, really showing off her distinct style, I think. It's often going to be a dramatic close-up of a girl's face with a bunch of cool textures or a full character surrounded by a sea of details, patterns, effects, and bold colors. At first glance, it can look like a complete chaos, but there is some logic to the madness. I watched all of the videos and interviews I could find from her, and in this one, she says something that really helped me understand her style. What she said there was that she tries to make her art look like it would taste good if you could eat it. And that's when it clicked for me. The colors are bold and varied because it looks kind of like a fruit salad or a pile of candies maybe. Gray candies don't look as tasty, so she seems to stay away from low saturation colors as a result. And the logic behind the chaotic feel to her paintings is unusual, but based on fundamentals still. She says in that same interview that she never went to art school or studied fine arts, but despite that, she seems to have still developed a knife for composition. There's so much noise because of all the details that it's hard to focus on anything, but she leaves small areas of flat paint, like the skin, you know, the face of her characters, to provide the rest area for the eye, because when everything is busy, the focal point often becomes whatever area is not busy. Usually I'll teach it the other way around since this is easier to do, you know, like having few details everywhere instead, and then keeping all of those details for the focal point or around the focal points. Now, one other thing she does a lot with the composition of her painting is to use the principle of repetition extensively. It's something you would normally see in graphic design a lot more, where patterns are repeated many times. And another thing that she repeats a lot is the same color harmony. It's one called a triad, where three colors at equal distance on a chromatic circle are selected. Often it's gonna be yellow, red, and blue. Very popular combination. And then if we zoom in, we'll be able to see that she tends to color her line art in some areas, so it doesn't stay black everywhere. Interesting. While zoomed in, I can also show you the various painting tricks that she uses. I say tricks for stuff that's not directly painted by hand, like these color halftones here around the painting. She uses that quite a bit, and it's definitely kind of trendy these days among artists. Then there are these strange colors used in the shading. And interestingly enough, she doesn't seem to ever use those for the skin of her characters, but she'll often use it for everything else. I'll show you how she does that later too. We can also spot a lot of noise when we zoom in some more. Also, and oh, I just noticed this double stroke brush here. She uses that quite a bit too, it looks like. Hang on, I'll make one of my own. It should only take a moment. Uh, there we go. That looks pretty similar. I'll add this to my free brush back, but more on that later. There are just a few more things I want to point out before we start painting. We can see these wiggly lines that she uses for smaller details. You can't do that in every painting software, but you can in Clip Studio Paint, which is what she uses. And Photoshop that I use also makes this possible. Then she also offsets the color channels on the outer area of most of her paintings to create this chromatic aberration effect. I'll show you how to replicate all of that in the next chapters after a quick reminder that my complete art education program is on sale at a ridiculous discount until the end of the month to celebrate the new year. Check the link to the art program in the video description. It's everything you need to learn to be able to paint whatever you want, including copying the style of your favorite artists like we're gonna do now. The first step of her workflow, like most people, is going to be the sketch, followed by a rough block-in of the composition and colors. Basically, a really loose version of what the final piece will be. I never do this, but I did this time, and uh, my character here is just Fern from the Free Run anime. And full disclosure, I just used the scene from the show to reference a pose for her. 
didn't come up with it. But anyways, it seems like we're making good progress, but that's only the beginning. From this stage, she'll get a clean line drawing. So I did the same. And I believe that she'll just leave it on top of her layer stack until she adds smaller details towards the end. And then talking about layer, she uses many more than I tend to do, so it can get a little confusing, but I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. The main thing will be to separate each flat area, like each material, into their own layer and use each of those as the base for clipping masks. So if I add a layer on top and start painting the shading, which is, you know, the next step in her process, by setting that layer as the clipping mask, it will limit the impact to that color region only, along, you know, with anything else that I decide to add on top, as long as I also set it as a clipping mask. I don't tend to use clipping masks often, but for super busy paintings like hers, I can see the appeal in how it just helps keep things somewhat organized. Anyways, we're just gonna shade each color region one by one this way, adding shadows to our base color. You know, the base color should really be the lightest it'll be, and we'll build up the shadows on top, going from light to dark. She keeps it pretty subtle, focusing on cast shadows rather than really painting in the volumes. You can see that in the character's face, you know, like the hair is casting a bit of shadow, but that's about it for the shading. From there, her next step will be to tint the terminators. What? Well, that's the value right in between the shadows and the light in this case. I've shown you how to do this in Photoshop automatically in the past, but she just paints it in since she works in Clip Studio Paint. You know, that works too. We'll do the same. We just gotta select a value in between the shadow and the light. And then we're gonna crank up the saturation on that, which creates a nicely exaggerated like subsurface scattering effect. Also very popular. Once she's done with that, from what I've seen, she'll usually just move on to the background, which tends to be pretty simple. Sometimes she'll use some patterns, other times there'll be a simple texture. In any case, she'll often slap a noise filter on top before moving back to the characters to work on all the cool finishing touches that, you know, really help make her style stand out. All right, it's time for tricks. Let's check out the rest of her process. The next step will consist of a mix of things, you know, but roughly in this order. First, painting the effects, which often includes some extra hair strands to add motion to the piece. After that, we're gonna do a secondary shading pass. What? Then we'll wrap this up with a chromatic aberration effect. So starting with the effects, there's really not going to be any specific way to do this. It's different for each of her paintings, but she does use this little trick of using a stroke layer style to make it so that each brush stroke comes with its own outline. She does a lot of the hair flying around this way, and this is also what she uses to do these tiny details too. Now, the secondary shading pass though is really what puzzled me at first. I had never seen this effect before. It's a combination of a few things. First, the color halftone filter on top of a flattened image. It looks pretty cool already. From there, she's just gonna move it around to cover the area that she's working on. And here's the magic to it. She then sets the blend mode of that layer to hard mix blend mode. So far, no change. But it's when you start to blend it that things get interesting. Using a smudge brush, you see it creates all of these secondary colors for free. You just gotta smudge stuff around until you get highlights, you know, that kind of makes sense. Of course, using a lower opacity for the layer because hard mix looks crazy at 100% opacity. And then she'll just repeat that for every part of the painting, except again, the skin of the character. That's how she gets all of these secondary colors in there very quickly. Not only that, but if you don't smudge everything in the corners that you've missed, you'll be able to spot the color halftones. So it kind of leaves like a nice little something behind. At first, I thought maybe she had like a halftone brush, but that's definitely not it. And it's quick and easy. And then finally, she'll add a chromatic aberration pass. So we can do this by first creating a flattened copy of the painting and then going into the channels where we just have to nudge each of them by a few pixels, which, you know, should create the effect. In Photoshop, you can also use the lens correction filter for the same effect. Now, it's a little too much to have it everywhere, but you just erase the center of the layer and uh, voila. Now it's only found on the edges of the painting and uh, well, Mikael Picasso's secrets are all yours now. And that's gonna be it for this first episode of YouTube Art School Study Time. If this video ends up doing good, I'm planning on doing more like it, maybe like every month or so, because it's a lot more work. So do let me know in the comments, you know, if you have any other popular artists that you want to see featured. Mika Picasso was recommended by you guys, so thanks for that. I had no idea who she was before, but I learned a few things and this was a really fun practice. Like I said, though, it was a lot of work to put together and to prep for it. So I hope you enjoyed it. Help me make more content like this for you guys by sharing the video around. And before I end the class, since you've been a good student and followed until the end, 
I'm giving away one of my two main custom brush packs for free with the link in the video description. It contains a few of the brushes that I use today, including the double stroke one that I made based on her art. These are some of my favorite brushes. Go and get them. All right, I'll see you next week.